Hey guys, welcome to Pekpong. Okay, do it again. <laughs> Today we're going to be learning how to loop long serves with Jerry Martinko. He is a Champions League player and he plays for the national team of Czech Republic and he's won several youth titles at the European Championships. So if you have trouble looping long serves, we're going to be going over how to loop each individual type of serve. So maybe forehand pendulum serve, backhand serves, scoop serves, dead serves. Uh, we're going to be going over it all, and uh, we have this great player to help out. So an, a question I know you guys are going to ask is, what kind of equipment does he play with? Um, it's a common question, so we'll just, yeah, what do you play with? Okay guys, so I'm sponsored by Tibha, and I'm currently playing with uh, Tibha Blade uh, CCA Unlimited, and I'm using uh, black rubber, it's on my forehand side, it's a K3 Hybrid, and on my backhand side I'm using uh, Evolution MXP, so this is my setup. Perfect. So first thing which we are going to demonstrate will be forehand pendulum service. So what are some important things that you think uh, would help people to receive the surf better? Like what are the common problems and okay. solutions that you think? Okay. I, I think that the peop people, especially on the low level, they have a little bit problem that they don't read uh, the side spin properly that they are sometimes aiming too much on the backhand side and because in the serve it's quite a lot of side spin then the ball flies outside of the table yeah. from the side so I would in encourage to aim, aim, your, aim your receive a little bit closer to the middle side because then, then your ball will have better placement and it's not so big risk that the ball will go outside of the table too far out yeah, yeah. and also it's very important to hold the ball on your racket so as well as aiming properly with the wrist and body, also producing your own amount of spin to kind of control the ball and, and not let their spin do too much action on your racket. Yes, yes. All right, so let's, uh, let's demonstrate and see, uh, see if I can do it properly. Okay, let's go. All right. Yeah. Good, and maybe a little more spin. I, I think you, you finish like this, you should more a little bit control, okay. control with the body. movement and go with the body forward. Yes, this was better. That was, that was really good. I like that you follow the ball until the end and also placement was very well to the middle, what is very difficult for the opponent. It's very, many opponents have problem at the middle, so this was very good receive. Yeah. So what are some problems that you feel uh, you have when, when someone makes a really good serve? What are some things that you focus on? Uh, what I focus on sometimes, I have a big problem that I I see somebody make fast movement and I try and I try to play so fast and I'm not uh, patient enough to take the right timing. So because sometimes it's it's better to to wait a little bit longer and then not to play that fast and just uh, take the ball on your racket to keep the ball a little bit and play with produce more quality with the wrist and yeah. and also for the opponent it's more difficult to keep the ball back. All right, so maybe you can uh, show the viewers how you do it and uh, they can see your technique. I will do my best. Okay. And I'll mix up the timings. Maybe the placement. Nice. So another question is, on top spin versus underspin, where do you feel like your hand position is for both of them, and how do you like adjust between them? Okay, so when I when I see that comes underspin serve, I know that I need to go more down with the legs because because serve has a lot of more spin, so I need to go deeper down and play more with my. I have to use more my wrist, and when I see upspin serve, it's uh, more important that I don't go that much down and I just I just play more over the ball because. The ball doesn't have so much spin, and if I would make same movement and use a lot of wrist, then the ball would go over the table. So you, you're saying, on the adjustment, is instead of using so much of the hand, you use more of the legs and keep the arm more stable. Yes, yes, it's very important for each each serve. Also, it's very important to use your legs because always you need to adjust 
how much spin is in the surf and that's how I use all those different my legs. Yeah, that's really interesting. So what are some things that you think that people have a problem with this or why they miss it? I think I think sometimes the people think that in that surf it's no no underspin at all and I think many players that are using a little bit underspin so the people very often don't read the spin properly and they play either they play to the net because they don't they don't go down with legs and they don't they don't produce good spin and also second common thing which some players do especially I feel it's that they are playing from down up and the movement is quite quite long and that's why the ball is sometimes coming uh, going over the table so you feel like it's important not to have too long of a motion and maybe make a more compact one that has good spin but is more compact. Yeah, this, this I agree. It's more important to make shorter movement but have a stable body that also the movement is not that long and you are prepared for the next ball mm. because your receive is not a final ball. Oof. What do you think happened there? Yeah. It this was a little bit to my middle, right? Yeah, it was to your middle and I think you didn't make enough space for your forehand stroke that you should go. A little bit more, okay. And play. Alright, let's try. Yes. This was better. This I made a good. bigger yes. movement. Yes. Good. And I have an interesting question and I don't know if you do this or not, but let's say that the opponent is constantly finding your middle. Uh, would you try to maybe shift your position a little bit so that they where they think your middle was it, it no longer is? It's always when I when I see that the opponent is uh, try to finding my middle, then I try to adjust my receive position. When the opponent is serving too, too deep to my backhand side, and I'm standing like here and I have problem that I have to make a big step, then I try to adjust and I try to go a little bit on the side that I can cover it easily with my forehand. Yeah, so it's like. If they're constantly trying to find the middle, you're never making it the same so that they, they really can't guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's also, I think, very important to, to don't have the same position always because also to get confused a little bit the opponent that he don't feel that uh, comfortable with the service. What do you think are some things that are important uh, for players to make good receives against kick serves? Yeah, I think kick service is for many players uh, very difficult to receive. Uh, I also feel for me it's sometimes really difficult to predict how the ball bounces because every every player hit the ball different for the kick service. And if, I think it's very important to uh, to try not to rush so much on the on the receive and very very important is not to make big swing because the ball has tendency to jump a little bit more and when you make a big swing it's very big chance that you hit the ball with edge so i think it's uh, very important to wait a little bit wait a little bit for the ball and to try to don't play so fast and to don't make so much swing and sometimes it's even even good to just the block on the on the other side of the table because it's uh, also for the serving player, sometimes it's really difficult because he gives kick and you can give him this spin back and then you can bring him in troubles. Depending on like the speed, let's say uh, a more slow kick versus a faster kick, uh, how would your stroke differ? On the slow kick, would you be a little more, a little more spin on it and on the faster one, you're a little more block or? Yeah, exactly how you said, when somebody make like slower kick, then I have more time so I can try to hit the ball a little bit faster, but when the Come, when it's coming faster kick, then it's uh, very Im very important to don't make long swing and just to try to bring the ball on the other side of the table. But when you feel comfortable, then you can adjust a little bit more power. Bit. All right, let's give it a try. See how I can make some kick serves and yeah, let's go. Yes. This one had good kick. 
I heard um, you have a good backhand kick. So you want to try some backhand kicks? Uh, it's a little bit my special service, and I can say that uh, also many players on uh, at advanced level have uh, sometimes trouble with the service. So let's try it. Okay, let's give it a go. See if I can get this backhand. <laughs> Out of the park. <laughs> uh, try again, I try again. There we go. A little bit shorter, a little more punchy. See if I can make a good backhand yes. kick. Give it a try. So when you make the, you feel like back of the ball, right? You pull yes. up on the back. Yes. Up. Yeah. Here it comes. Nice. Good. And what do you think are the common misconceptions or problems that people run across when they try to receive this serve? Yeah, I would say that the common problem is that uh, when, when we make heavy backspin service, its uh, timing is completely different because the ball has heavy downspin, heavy backspin, so it means that the ball comes extremely fast, but after the bounce on your side of the table slow down very much and some, some players have problem that they think it's like when somebody make upspin long service that they have to play very fast after the bounce, but because the ball slowed down extremely, you should wait a little bit and then carry the ball more from down because it's heavy, heavy underspin, so you should carry the ball more on the racket. Yeah, and as far as the wrist goes when making the spin, um, do you feel like you should be using a lot of wrist and or more like legs? And what, what is your feeling about making a good receive on this? Um, I think for this service it's uh, really very important to use both things as you mentioned, also legs and wrist, but especially for me I feel it's very important to use my wrist because I can uh, kill the backspin. Kill the backspin. When someone makes a lot of backspin on the surf, and it's really helped me, is to open my angle a little bit as opposed to being a little more closed because then I have to work really hard to spin the ball over the table. Do you think this is something that uh, players should do is try to open their angle a little bit. Yeah, it also de it definitely helps because then uh, then you can uh, spin the ball much with better quality and you you can carry the ball much easier because when the, your angle is quite close, then it's a very big chance that the, your receive will go to the net. This is one that I actually have a lot of trouble with. Okay. Um, so. So let's see. Let's see how I do. Yeah, so I think what I'm trying to do is, as you mentioned earlier, is to try to use your legs more to get under the ball, um, as opposed to my hand, because a lot of times I feel like maybe I get too low and I hit like kicks. So I'm trying to stay a little bit lower with the legs and then keep my hand a little bit higher and then also use a lot of wrist and I'm not hitting as many kicks, so. Oh, nice, nice. Nice, good. So now we are going to introduce the service, uh, backhand service or tomahawk service, which goes wide on the forehand side, like half long service. Yeah, I think that the very important thing is that uh, some players, they have a problem with the service because they know quite well how to receive service, which uh, has a second bounce behind the ending line, like behind the table. But the, they have the problem because the second bounce here is like wide to the side and they should go more with the 
right foot more under the table and don't be afraid to make a step on the side, one more extra step. So kind of like stepping into the table yes. and uh, first of all moving yeah. and then second of all maybe not being afraid to make a diagonal movement. Yeah, exactly, because when they are staying here behind the table and the ball is coming there then... Ah, uh, you're trying to cut, you're trying to cut off the angle because yeah. it'll keep getting further and further yeah. away. Exactly, exactly. Let's talk about maybe the difference between a longer serve versus a serve that's coming a little bit more in this area where the table starts to get in the way, which is a very common left-handed serve yes. um, as well as a right-handed serve. But what are the differences that you feel you, you make to make a good receive? Okay, so it's always uh, the question if it's like serve from left-hander or right-hander backhand service because then I, I have to think on the placement because for example when a lefty makes this service deep wide to my forehand then I should I should play deeper in his backhand side because it's very common that lefty serve and after he step around with forehand so when when he's stepping around a lot then it's very useful to play deep in his in his uh, backhand side that he cannot step around so well or sometimes to change parallel this ball and against right-hander is very useful because uh, they are most of the times they are serving like from middle from middle so they have big problem if you if you can loop this ball to their middle because they are after the serve a little bit at this position and when balls come to middle they have problems so this is uh, the difference how i would receive against lefty and against right-hander hmm. as far as ball timing goes let's say they make a really strong serve and it's really low do you try to take it a little bit more over the table or do you wait a little bit for for this ball to kind of give you a little more space? Yeah, it, it always depends on the player. I think every player does different. But for example, for me, I like to let the ball bounce a little bit under the table and that I can, I go after very deep with my legs and I can produce good spin. Mm. This is my favorite. When the serve is a little bit more with upspin, then it's uh, then it's good and really useful to play above the table, not let the ball not let the ball bounce under the table because anyway, when in serve is not so much under spin, you cannot produce so much mm. spin, so you are losing your good advantage. And we can do some like variation between longer and shorter ones, I think, okay. to make it really realistic. This was good. Uh. All right, one more. Here we go. Uh. Good. What do you think? Where, where do you think I could improve on those? Okay, I honestly think you did quite well that most of my service were wide on the side with a heavy underspin. So I like that you went really down with your legs and you hold the ball on the racket. So this was, you produced quite well spin and I think I think only one only one thing which uh, you could do better. Probably sometimes sometimes you let the ball bounce too much under the table. Sometimes was not so spinning ball, so would be would be better if you hit the ball a little bit earlier and play a little bit faster. Mm, okay, so sometimes it was a little bit too long. Yes. So finding that fine line between waiting yes. and yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Perfect. All right, let's have you try some. Okay. As far as, I mean, this is a very common serve that left-handers will do uh, very quickly, right? They'll, they'll serve this like surprise serve down the line. Yes. And I had a question about that is, when a lefty does this serve, are you aware that they could do this serve and you're kind of protecting yourself against that when you're playing matches? Yeah, I think it's always uh, very important to, to wait that can first come long serve 
because some players, they automatically go already for the short service. And once we decide already before the serve is done to go on short service, and then opponent surprise us with the long service, then it's almost impossible to get back in the position. So it's recommended to stay, stay low and wait first that the long service is coming. Because when the short service is coming, make movement forward, it's always easier than when you are forward to make your movement back. And I have some trouble with uh, topspin serves, like heavy topspin. Um, not quite the kick, but just normal heavy topspin. Sometimes like, I, I spin it out. Uh, what are some recommendations that you give when a player like that has trouble spinning it out? Uh, uh, all right, so when somebody makes underspin service, it's, it's good to produce a lot of, lot of spin with your wrist. But the difference when somebody makes heavy upspin service is that you should go more forward and don't make so long movement because then the ball can very, mm. very often, not so often ball comes in the net, but very often comes the ball behind the table. So it's a bit like before when you said about the dead serve, not to make too long of a movement and carry the ball too long. Yes. You're trying to make a little bit shorter with spin, but not carrying the ball so much. Exactly, a little bit, little bit shorter movement and try, try to Try to not wait so much when the ball bounces and try to hit it quite early. Okay, let's give some of those a try. Ah, that's really nice. And now, now you had really nice timing that you hit the ball properly. When the ball just jumped, you hit really good timing. Good. I think, I think my biggest takeaway from this is that I think I was going a little bit too long and carrying the ball too much. So I think that will help me a lot when I'm uh, doing my practice on this. Yeah, because I think many, many people, they are thinking when they want to produce good stroke, good receive, that the movement is necessary must be so long. But it doesn't mean that long movement will produce better spin. It's very important also to be, to be stable and make your movement a little bit shorter but must be with a lot of tension in your whole body. It begins with legs, your abs, and hmm. tension is very important. Yeah. So, um, I have some free questions that I, I'm interested in asking uh, Jerry. He gets to play against some of the highest level players, um, and I'm just interested in hearing his take on some of these questions. So, uh, my first question is, what do you think about the uh, players who are able to keep a long serve short. Players like Truls Morgard and the LeBrun brothers both kind of chopping these serves short. What do you, do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing, or um, what do you think? Honestly, I think it's a very useful thing because more variation you have on receive, it's always better. And this is something which, uh, honestly, when a player has service, he doesn't expect at all that the ball comes short. So if you can, use it in the match, it, I think you have huge advantage that you make the point because uh, serving player is completely surprised. So I think it's very useful stuff. So my next question is, I have trouble with high toss serves. Uh, when the player makes really high toss, sometimes I get a little bit, um, I feel like off time because of the timing. Are there some things that you do in particular to be more ready for this high toss and, and not get so mixed up with the timing? Yeah, it also depends on the conditions, but I think especially also, also for the head, the many people when somebody make high toss, they are more afraid from the serve, but also many people are doing a high toss serve because when you make high toss, you can produce more spin. And personally, what I do, that uh, I don't try to honestly follow the all toss so high, that because sometimes also you look straight to the light and then you are blind until the end of the point, so that's, I what I don't do so often. And I, I try just, I just try to look when the opponent ha, uh, toss the ball, and then I am trying to see the contact with the ball and try to prepare for the serve. Nice, nice. So when an opponent makes a long serve, uh, what are some indicators that they are gonna serve long? Like sometimes I feel like I'm seeing the long serve as it comes to me, and I feel like some players are able to notice certain things about their opponent to be more ready for this. Yeah, it always, it always depends. Like you can, for example, look some opponents, uh, they change 
the grip for the serve and then uh, I think it's not so good for the serving player when for example he changed the grip for long serve, he holds the racket different than for short serve, then the receiving player has a huge advantage. And honestly I also try, try to look for, for sure when the player makes bigger swing then it's a bigger chance that that is big chance that will come long serve so that I also try to look so this two things I would say and as far as like game tempo timing are there times in games where you feel like a person is more prone to serve long honest honestly not so many players are using long serve when it's a very close situation because it's like quite risky also and like also it's very common that for example some players are it's completely behind in the in the game and he has not so many options what to try and his uh, short serve doesn't function well so it's time to change something so it can happen that out of uh, five services he can make even three long and try to surprise me and then make two long services then one short and then I'm a little bit afraid what is coming my receive has not so much quality and you can turn the game so I think uh, long serve is a very good weapon and often uh, a lot of uh, it's quite underestimated. Okay. Okay, well, it's been amazing. Thank you. Uh, making this video with you and learning all your um, tips and tricks. And I learned a lot from this. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Seth, for your invitation. It was, was fun. And I hope you guys enjoy it and you will take some advice from it and you can apply it. Perfect. Perfect.